Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are taking a look at the Tier 8 Premium Soviet Battleship, the Lenin, or the uh, Comrade Nelson, if you will. So, the Lenin, as you can tell by the title of this video, she is considered to be a rare ship because she has been removed from the Premium Shop and the armory you can't pick her up anymore for dubs or for well outright purchase she is still in the uh, Santa container event and the other events that might pop up throughout the year when they offer up um, some containers that could drop some rare or removed ships she's still usually involved in those at least but you might be thinking sealer why are we talking about this ship then if we can't get this ship. Well, as you can tell by the other part of today's title, this ship is going to start to pop up quite a bit more in random battles because the next season, the upcoming season of clan battles, has been announced and it is Tier 8 6v6, which is suspiciously one slot down from the usual 7v7 format of CBs. Might be because they are considering adding in a um, other class into the clan battles ships class but that's another video for another day but yes tier 8 clan battles is go is going to be happening this go round, and it is right around the corner with update 11.6 coming this week along with the economic rework as well so it brings us this new CB season. And why are you going to be seeing a lot of Lennon in random battles? Well, because those that have Lennon are going to start taking her out more and more to get used to playing her for this upcoming season of CBs, unless she gets arbitrarily banned at the beginning, like the Petro or the Kleber in the previous clan battle season, but I don't think that's going to happen out the gate. But anyway, this ship is ridiculously good. Like, she is, hands down, one of the best Tier 8 battleships, which is very interesting to me because Lennon came out and not a lot was really said about her. I mean, I remember the general consensus is that the Lennon was a very good ship, but given how good this ship is, it's interesting to me that we didn't really see a lot of hoopla about uh, Russian bias like we normally do when anything Soviet comes out and it's halfway decent. Now, granted, she did get released, I believe, either the same patch or, like, halfway through the patch the Soviet battleships were released. So, uh, I mean, of course, you had the Kremlin and the Sinop and all of them out and about getting the community's attention. So that might be why the Lenin kind of flew under the radar. But this is, again, one of the best ships at Tier 8, if not the best, one of the best Tier 8 battleships. And we're going to be taking a look at her today. And if you don't have her, you might want to stick around because, well, you could potentially pick her up in an event container. And I would say if you had a pretty good chance of picking her up, like say that in a uh, event or something that they do add in the Tier 8 premium ship containers, and they do offer those, I would say this ship is potentially worth uh, trying to get. Or if you have any other way, shape, or form that you could pick her up. Or if you're running into her and you're having a hard time dealing with her, we'll also go over her weaknesses here as well. So if you want to know how to deal with her in that manner as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at the linen. So like I mentioned at the start of this video, the linen is in the same vein as the Nelson and the Izumo with all three of her main battery turrets in front of her superstructure. The idea behind this layout is that if you have all your guns grouped up in one section on your deck, then well, when you're putting armor on your battleship, you only have to really armor that main belt area. You don't have to extend the main armor belt all the way down past the superstructure to the rear of the ship to get it covering that third turret so you save a bit of tonnage weight and um, resources doing this it was a way that they were trying to get around some of the treaties at this time like with the the Nelson that's why her turrets are in that manner as well if you go back and look at a lot of historical blueprints and such for the US Navy too they were toying with similar designs or similar uh, ways of trying to skirt the naval trees at the time and get in their new battleships under the tonnage limit but anyway so that's what's up with this turret setup anyway so the the I've almost to the Nelson the linen her armor is pretty decent if you've played or seen a lot of Russian battleships it looks pretty familiar until you get to the sides she has that icebreaker bow it's just a hundred millimeter strip around her waterline that wraps completely around her bow and her bow is also 32 when you come over to the side she has an upper 
armor belt of 50 millimeters. That goes to 150, 100, 150 millimeter armor belt as you get down to her main armor belt of 350 millimeters. And then that wraparound piece of armor almost extends all the way to her stern. You do have a 100 millimeter slot there, then a 200, 200 millimeter plating around her steering gears, but her stern is 32. And it looks very weird because it is. This is some very odd aircraft recovery system you got going on back here. It does get the linen, the nickname of a whaling factory ship because, well, that's what it looks like. But yes, it does have a flat stern. And yes, you can get pinned quite easily through that stern, through that hangar door area there because that is just 32 millimeters of armor that's straight up at a 90 degree angle. So. Yeah, you do want to be careful about your stern, but granted, all the guns are in the front, so no need to really show them your stern. Now, if you do strip away the ship's armor, you look at a citadel, her citadel is exceptionally high and exceptionally dry. Um, and it doesn't have the slight curve to it that the other Soviet battleship citadels do. They have this slight inward curve that increases the effectiveness of the armor, but the linen does not have that. It's perfectly flat. So, if you've watched my Soviet battleship guide video, in and I state there's a very fine line in the Soviet battleships between angling enough to where everything bounces off your main belt and your ship collapses like it's 1993, the same is doubly so in the Lenin. You don't want to give any ship the slightest chance of shooting your flat broadside because you are going to lose most of your health, if not get outright slapped, if you do that in the linen. But, on the other hand, too, if you stay angled enough, then you've got nine 16-inch guns bearing down on the enemy, and they're just going to be absolutely bouncing everything off of your armor. She's very, very good at just finding a position on the map and simply existing. She has excellent armor for that, like we've seen here. And she has other traits to help her with that as well. So moving on down to her survivability, she has 63,200 hit points. Which is a healthy amount of hit points for a tier 8 battleship. It's nothing too insane, but it's far from being on the low side as well. Especially with that armor scheme that she does have. 22% torpedo damage reduction as well on the linen. And her guns. You get 9 16-inch Soviet biased guns on this ship. They have a 33 second reload time, they 180 in 25 seconds, they have a maximum dispersion of 234 meters, the maximum range of 18.4 kilometers. HE shells do a maximum damage of 5,850, and have a 41% chance of causing a fire on the target, and they can pin 68 millimeters of armor, and those come with the tubes at 793 meters a second. AP does a maximum damage of 13,100. Those come out the tubes at 793 meters a second. Uh, this is with my commander module build on the ship. I'll throw that right back up here for you so you can see that as well. So 793 meters a second along with the Soviet shell arcs and Soviet shell characteristics give the Lenin some very comfortable guns. It's not like the American battleships where you have to lead the target for days. The, 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 the Lenin shells get there quite quickly. They're very comfortable to aim. Dispersion is a little bit trolly as, you know, it is still a tier 8 battleship. It, yes, it is a Soviet tier 8 battleship, but it is still a tier 8 battleship. So, 916 inch guns at tier 8, you're going to have to pay for that in some way, shape, or form. And, yeah, you won't be railgunning ships at maximum range, but definitely from 15, 16 kilometers in, you're going to be at least landing a couple of shells per salvo. Of course, when you're pushing your range, as you'll probably see in the match watching in the background, uh... You know, it is going to be a little more frustrating, but from medium to close range, these guns hit. They hit hard as hell, and they are excellent for dealing with battleships or cruisers that slip up and show you their, their broadside. And of course, too, this is a tier 8 battleship with 16-inch guns, which means that when you're top tier, you have quite a bit of overmatch abilities on the lower tier battleships and, of course, cruisers as well. So you can absolutely blew the living crap out of many a ship. And again, why this is probably going to be a pretty popular pick for the upcoming season of clan battles. And of course, too, with having all three guns for the superstructure, you don't have to try and give a tremendous amount of broadside to get that third turret on target. Of course, you have to show a little bit more, but given the armor belt of the linen, 
you can get just enough of an angle out to get that third turret out and still be able to tank most of the shells coming in at you. Of course, if you run into like a Shikishima or something like that, it's a different story. But definitely when facing same tier ships, yeah, you can comfortably get all three guns on target. And what's really cool too with the Lennon that the Japanese and the British didn't figure out is that turret number two on the Lennon can 360. That one at the top, it can just you know, spin all the way around. It, it ain't got to wait for nobody. It, it ain't got a restricted turn radius like the Nelson does, which I'm not sure if there's a in-life reason that it couldn't 360 or what. But, yeah, it can 360 here on the Linen, which is very comfortable and very, very convenient when you're having to turn and run and have to swing your guns around from one side of your ship to the other side. You always have that number two turret that's pretty much ready to go whenever you need it. So the gun and firepower here are excellent. Survivability is already excellent on this ship, but there's still more to go with the Lennon. Uh, she does have quite a few secondaries. She has 1200mm secondaries. Uh, yeah, they're there. They exist. They don't really do much. She also has 12 um, 152s as well. Yes, they're here. They don't do much. I mean, it's definitely not a secondary build ship. They're more there to contribute to the AA than anything. Which, speaking of the AA on the Linen, she has an A rating of 68, but it, it's it's not very good. It, in my experience, that this ship is in need of an AA buddy when it goes anywhere. But given that Nick Clam, Clam Adel season doesn't have CVs in it, that's not going to be an issue for the Linen. But yes, her lack of AA is one of her one of her weaknesses. Um, if you're curious, she does have uh 10 dual mounted 37 millimeter guns she has eight quad mounted 37 millimeter guns and then the 12 100 millimeter secondaries contribute to her aa suite as well it's out to 5.8 kilometers continuous damage is 232 the shell explosions do 1330 damage and the priority sector reinforcement is 35 percent lackluster aa from my experience with the linen which is quite a bit Maneuverability, her maximum speed is 29.9 knots with a speed flag equipped, so literally 0.1 knot shy of 30 knots, which is a really quick tier 8 battleship. And she's also pretty quick on the get up from my experience with her. I mean, she's not like, you know, French DD speed boosting, but for a tier 8 battleship, she does accelerate pretty comfortably from my experience with her. Um, again, not like French DD, but faster than your normal tier 8 battleship. Her turning circle race is 840 meters, and her rudder shift time is 13.5 seconds. Consumed with the commander's skill and the module gets down to 13.1 kilometers. So between that and your main battery guns, you have roughly uh, five, six-ish kilometers to play with. So, onto her consumables, she gets fighter, that's it, don't have charge of fighter or spotter. She gets four charges of the repair party consumable with the um, battleship superintendent skill, so that's the maximum amount of repairs that you can have. They regen 378, oh, sorry, 379 hit points per second. It's active for 30.8 seconds. Reload is 76 seconds. You get four charges of that. And then she has the fast damage cons of the Soviet battleships. She gets five charges of that maximum again with the battleship superintendent skill. Oh, they're active for 11 seconds. Reload in 38 seconds. You get five charges of that. So, all in all, when you combine all that together, you have what is a very, very, very tanky Tier 8 battleship. That, in the match you're watching right now, which is a Tier 10 game, I'm able to stick out here and be well in the enemy team's focus for a good portion of the match and just exist. I'm able to use most of my guns at definitely a majority of the time. I mean, I'm even able to get that third turret around into the match quite often definitely more than i would if that turret was faced what was placed traditionally you know behind the superstructure like on another tier 8 battleship and this isn't a tier 10 game so you can imagine how tough this thing is going to be in a tier 8 game when it's just tier 8 ships with no cvs which is its greatest weakness think about that oh, i forgot to put you to the deck uh, plating is 45 millimeters on the middle section Again, for a tier 8, that's pretty decent. Now, two. The other weakness for this battleship is typically other battleships that can find its side or torpedoes. It does only have a 22% torpedo damage reduction, which is fairly low by the Japanese battle uh, Japanese by the Soviet battleship standards. Most of them are at least in the 
high 30s. When you get to higher tier, it's you know that, that gets bumped to the 40s and 45% with the Kremlin, which is very nice for a a, a high tier, close in, engaging battleship to have. But yeah, all this in one battleship, and you can see why I, I would be surprised that this ship didn't get more Soviet bias claims hurled at it than it did. Now, don't get me wrong, there were some, but it, it definitely wasn't what we normally get when we get, again, a stronger-than-average uh, Russian ship in the game. But, yeah, if you want to punish the ship, something really easy to do is get around to its rear, uh, if you can, at least. I say it really easy, but once you get to the rear of this ship or catch its flat broadside, it it's pretty toast. Again, if you're in another battleship, it, its stern is very blocky. Aim for that hangar, you'll chunk it like it's nobody's business through the stern. You can even hit, shoot the stern itself if you can manage to pull that off, but it's very slim down there. And again, if you catch this thing's broadside, it, it gets just absolutely evaporated. Exceptionally hard. Um, there's a match where I was pressed into making a decision between trying to slow down to the raw potential torpedoes that were coming at me from a low yang or try and pray that RNG would, be, RNG would be on my side and hope that the Massachusetts off to my side uh, didn't blap me for all my health. And I was at like 40k health, and sure enough, I slowed down to try and throw off the torpedoes that I thought the Lo Yang were firing at me, and the Massachusetts from, I think, like uh, 16 kilometers, 15 kilometers away, which, for Massachusetts, is um, not too, too far of a shot, but definitely uh, pushing... Especially with the Massachusetts with the Massachusetts Sigma, and yeah, sure enough, the Massachusetts just clipped me with like I think three shells on my side, and they were citadels, and there I went. But staying properly angled in this ship will just absolutely extend your life so so much, and you balance your fires with your quick damage cons. And I have to mention Kusazov on this ship in random battles, because of course that's all disabled in clan battles. But you throw Kusazov on the ship and his will to victory skill where once you get down to 10% health you get a free damage con and another heal. God, this ship is so, so hard to kill. It's a cockroach. But unlike a lot of other tier 8 battleships that normally have to pick between having good sur sur survivability and good guns, the Lenin here gets both. It gets great survivability with its armor, its consumables, its decent HP pool, and it gets a really sweet set of guns on top of that as well. So guys, be looking out for this ship. You're going to be seeing her a lot more because this is definitely going to be a, a ship that's going to be pretty much standard for clan battles. Again, unless it gets banned. I don't think they'll ban it outright out the gate. But if they do like they're supposed to and introduce new ship bans every two or so weeks... I say that, but they didn't do it until the last two weeks of clan battles this time around. She might wind up getting banned, but then there's so many other goofy ships at tier 8 that you could pull from. But anyway, guys, that's all for today. I just felt like talking about the Lennon today as the announcement of the new tier 8 clan battle season was released a few days ago. No matter what you guys think about her. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We need 40,000 subs, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you all had a wonderful Monday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.